file today are from technical writing background or technical documentation, technical communication background. Who's in marketing? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you're from marketing in a way, yeah. So the rest is not in marketing. Do I get that right? You're all wrong. <laughs> because as tech writers, you are also part of marketing. And that's something we need to understand. Um, because technical communication is also marketing communication. It's, it's part of the customer experience. And therefore, we need to look from that marketing angel also at technical documentation. This is not a shoe, this is an experience. And I could also say, this is not a manual. This is an experience for the customer. So, my presentation is called From Products to Experiences and why you, as technical communicators, are part of the customer experience as well. So, okay, you can skip that slide. Shantanu Narayan, the CEO of Adobe, uh, he recently said, people buy experiences, not products. And if you think about that, that you're not only buying a piece of hardware, or a piece of physical product, but you're buying into a whole world, whole world of the emotions and everything around it, then we need to look at technical documentation also from a different perspective. And why that is, I want to, uh, want to explain by going a little bit into customer experience management. So in commerce, customer experience, or CX, is the product of an interaction between an organization, that is your company, and a customer over the duration of their relationship. That's what Wikipedia gives as a quick one sentence uh, explanation about customer experience management. So customer experience manage management is about managing all the touch points, the interactions between a customer and your organization. So let's have a look at that customer journey. So we have the first contact that could be an advertising at uh, the airport, uh, that could be an advertising on Google in the search results, or maybe in a um, brochure or marketing catalog or on a trade fair or whatever. Uh, that's the first contact that you might make with the brand. And then you go into that, into that uh, investigation phase and start researching about that product. We want to try to find out if that product is right for you. And it doesn't really matter if you're a consumer or maybe an IT manager who's looking for a server blade. And then at one point you go into the decision phase where you make a decision of, about buying or not buying that product. And when you go into the buying decision, you go into the shopping experience. It's a nice experience to buy that product, maybe on Amazon, maybe from the uh, company homepage. Once you have bought it, you get into the user experience. Now, most conferences, people only talk about the user experience, about the software or whatever. Um, but you, the user experience is just one part of uh, the customer journey. And when something goes wrong, you also uh, go into the support experience. And that's where we technical communicators often come in, uh, because we create the content for the support team, we create the content for the user. And let's separate a little bit between offline touch points and online touch points. So offline touch points are typical on-site advertising, so you see some, some nice uh, poster or something. The store where you go in to buy a product, it's the product packaging. If you see all these unboxing videos on YouTube where people uh, film how they unbox their new iPhone or so, this boxing uh, and product packaging uh, experience is a big part of that customer experience as well. Then you have the product and the service features, the product itself, and how to use that product, the ease of use and the reliability of um, um, uh, the software. I installed, uh, thanks for the license, uh, installed um, uh, Snagit recently. And it's super easy to use. And I was blown away how easy to use it is. And that's a good uh, customer or user experience in, about how to use uh, the software. But if something goes wrong, I would go to your customer care and uh, ask them to, for help. And the experience I make there influences how I like the product or not and my willingness to reinvest into the product. And then I have digital touch points. So search engines like Google or so. I have online campaigns where uh, I see content from that uh, company. I have social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever. We have the corporate marketing website. 
that might usually or will usually look very nice. We have the customer care website, the help center, where you can look for documentation about the product, how to use it. And we have communities like forums and newsletter, uh, news lists and so on, email lists and so on. And the result of all the experiences that they make as a customer over these offline touch points and digital touch points influence what I feel about the brand and the product. And the result is either a good one or a bad one. And if it's a bad one, I have that bias remorse, which means I will never again buy that product. And in the worst case, I tell all my friends, don't ever buy that, or don't ever fly with that airline, or whatever. Um, or it results in brand loyalty. That's what I have, for example, with Apple and my iPhone. I have an iPhone since the first generation and always continue to reinvest into the new generation because I like the product and all my experiences with the product were good. The support experience is good. App Store, uh, people are really great in taking care of uh, when you have a problem. Uh, the uh, technical documentation looks nice. Runs on Adobe Experience Manager, by the way. And uh, the product itself is a good experience. So. The, all these factors influence my customer experience. But managing this whole story, the whole customer experience, that's a big challenge today for many companies. So all these multiple uh, touch points have a cumulative impact on the customer experience. They pile up. Yeah? And inconsistent content experiences create a fuzzy brand experience. So maybe you have a great marketing website, but a really shitty technical documentation. And then, then you have two very different experiences, and it confuses your emotions about that brand. Marketing and technical communication content are often sitting in content silos. They are disconnected. They are disconnected content worlds. And the CIOs, when you talk to them, and the CSOs and the CMOs in the companies, they often struggle with cluttered IT ecosystems and implementing a holistic customer uh, experience content strategy very often fails on technical challenges. So when I talk to um, uh, content strategists like Nozobina or Rahel and Bailey or so, or um, Scott Abel or so, they develop nice content strategies for companies. But when they then go into the companies to implement them, they face a lot of challenges because, oh yeah, no, we cannot uh, connect the technical documentation with the, with, the, with the marketing website because we have one content management for that, for that and one content management for that, and then we have a PIM system and an asset management system, and it all doesn't work together. And uh, we also have uh, Salesforce or whatever, <laughs> yeah, so, and, or SAP or whatever, and it all doesn't work together. And uh, then suddenly that nice, beautiful content strategy that really looks good on paper on how to manage the customer experience fails because the companies have so many IT systems and they struggle to connect uh, the content snippets with each other. So customers uh, expect to experience a consistently satisfying brand experience throughout all touch points. Marketing, shopping, support, community, all that. And I want to have the same good experience on all these touch points with, with the company I'm interacting with. Our approach here with uh, Adobe is uh, we have the Adobe Experience Manager. And on Adobe Experience Manager, you can uh, host your marketing website. You uh, can do campaign management. You have content analytics. And you have, uh, can now also manage the customer care support portal. That is where XML documentation for Adobe Experience Manager comes in, and where we as technical communicators can suddenly plug in into that big marketing world and big uh, customer experience management world that the company is driving. Why is that important? And why is it important that we as technical communicators understand that our content that we produce has a big impact? Let me give you that quote from Matthew, uh, James Matthewson, the head of search strategies for IBM.com. Actually, he just left uh, IBM, but uh, recently he said that. 74% of business-to-business -business customers refer to post-sales documentation as part of their per-sage decision-making cycle. So the IT companies who buy from IBM software or hardware, they are going to the help center of IBM look up for the technical uh, content, including technical documentation, and then make a buying decision. For example, they go, the IT manager goes to the IBM support portal, pulls out the maintenance manual, 
how easy it is to replace that server blade, and if it's an easy way, uh, it works, works in a way that he expects, then he makes that buying decision and buys that server blade. So 74% 70 of IBM's customers use technical documentation to make a buying decision. And that's huge. Yeah? So in my own words, technical communication is marketing communication, and it's a hidden sales champion. And a lot of companies have not understood that yet. And especially in the high, uh, IT market, software market, uh, hardware market, phone companies, and so on, they, mo many of them have not really understood the impact of technical content on the customer experience. So technical communication and customer support have a substantial post-sales and pre-sales impact on brand loyalty and the willingness for long-term reinvestments. And when marketing and technical communication live in disconnected content worlds and in their own silos, it creates a fuzzy, if not negative, customer experience. Let me give you an example. This is the website of Cybersource. Cybersource is a Visa company, the credit card company, and Cybersource is creating software that is uh, for uh, fraud detection and uh, detecting criminal activities around credit cards and so on. So they have this beautiful uh, marketing website, and uh, it's a typical marketing website that looks good, there's a big logo, there's some nice visuals, some big headline and so on. They have a support portal there. So uh, a lot of software developers are using Cybersource to implement it into financial applications, and they need, for example, API documentation. And Cybersource is, has a team, big team of uh, technical writers, and they create, for example, API documentation. So, now I'm a developer. Now I want to get access to the API documentation, land up at this beautiful marketing website, and what is my experience with the API documentation, or was? This. Yeah? 1980 or 1990 uh, web help, uh, no proper search, uh, looks ugly, completely different design from uh, the marketing website, different fonts, different colors, everything is different. It has nothing to do with the great marketing experience I had before with uh, Cybersource. And now I'm disappointed. As a developer, I say, yeah. I have a hard time, I cannot even bookmark topics uh, of the API calls that I need, uh, need to call uh, um, very often and so on. Cybersource did understand that and did understand that they need to provide a better experience to their customers. And so they revamped the uh, technical documentation completely, also built on Adobe Experience Manager. And they built this new, much more nice looking help portal or support center with a big search bar where you can search for answers. You have featured topics like getting started and payment processing and transaction responses and so on. And here on the left side, uh, you can access multiple topics. You can sign in with your own account uh, to bookmark uh, content and comment on content, uh, content and so on. This is much better than this. Yeah? And it creates a much more consistent customer experience. And now when you go to the Cybersource homepage, you have support here. You have, of course, the merchant support, but you also have technical documentation with, with all the subtop uh, subtopics. So it's right on the main homepage of Cybersource. You can find technical documentation now. And they understood that technical documentation is really important for their target group, for their customer group which is mostly developers and, um, and uh, um, financial companies. This is another example from Palo Alto Networks, big um, um, uh, network and uh, IT security company. They have completely revamped their um, uh, help portal and support portal called Tech, Tech Docs now, uh, with a nice visual, nice search bar as well, and several blogs, and uh, people can access uh, the technical documentation very easy from that new help portal, which looks much nicer uh, than a classic uh, PDF download only version. So corporations need to leverage the power of their technical content for marketing and sales. And when corporations want to leverage uh, the power of technical content for marketing and sales, they need intelligent content. And they need to break down the silos between the multiple systems that they have. And they need to manage them on one platform. Wait, intelligent content? 
Have you heard that term before? Maybe when you look at some conferences uh, around the world on technical uh, documentation and communication, people talk a lot about intelligent content. It's not content that is written in an intelligent way and uh, provides intelligent information. It's about content that is structured, XML-based, and have, has an underlying intelligence uh, behind it. To give you an example of what that means, what you see here on the left side is HTML. It's a UL. What is a UL? Unsorted list, right, from HTML. And LI? List item, right. So uh, we have that unsorted list with list item. And uh, there is uh, some content, Mary Jane, some number, Montersville, Pennsylvania, United States, and 001, and the number. So we as human beings can easily understand, OK, that's a name, first name, last name. There's a, a house number, a street, uh, the state, uh, the country. And this is very likely a phone number. So we as human beings, we just look at it. And based on our experience, we know that's, that's an address detail. Uh, but an IT system doesn't know that. For an IT system, it's just list items with a, a couple of strings in it, in no sorted order, and it's not clear what to pull out from that. On the right side, you have structured content. So there's a root element called address that ends here and starts there. And there you have these tags like first name, last name, street, state, country, uh, co country and mobile. And the name is split into first and last name. And with that, any XML understanding tool can d uh, drill down into that content and pull out the right information, for example, to personalize content. So when you log in and you have that first name, the system can look into that uh, um, first name field and say, hi, Mary, ni nice that you're visiting our support portal again. Yeah? So you can personalize that content. And to provide that personalization level, you need XML. You need to have that semantic tagging of uh, characters and strings and numbers. This is another example of um, uh, intelligent content. Uh, what we have here is a hazard statement coming from Dida. It has an ID, it has an importance attribute, and a translate attribute with the value yes. And in that hazard statement that starts here and ends here, there is a message panel. Attribute, platform, car display, audience, driver. Type of hazard, slow down. How to avoid? Slow down to 100 kilometers per hour maximum to avoid accidents. So this is a message panel that is headed towards uh, to be displayed in a car display, in a head-up display of a car, for example. And then you have a message panel, GPS by computer, and the audience is the cyclist. Type of hazard, slow down. Same message, but this time only to 30 kilometers per hour to avoid penalties. And the third um, message panel, this time platform is the smartwatch, Apple Watch, whatever. And the audience is the runner. And same message again, uh, slow down and how, uh, slow down to 10 kilometers per hour maximum to avoid health problems. So you as a technical writer, you create all these three message panels in one hazard statement, in one XML file. And then it can be distributed based on these platform and audience attributes to wherever it fits. If you're running, it will be, uh, and uh, the watch measures your speed, it will, uh, di will be displayed on, the smart on your smartwatch. When you're cycling, it will be displayed on your GPS by computer. And if you're a driver driving a car, it will be displayed on your head-up display. But you have one single source of truth of that information, and you're maintaining and managing it in one single piece of XML, and then it can be distributed to the um, delivery channels like a car display, a GPS by computer, or the smartwatch. But, uh, maybe it's not the best example, and maybe that example doesn't make too, all too much sense, but it shows that you can manage for different output channels, different scenarios, different contexts where the user is in, different kinds of messages, and then uh, uh, deliver it to the right channel. You could also make a um, uh, platform uh, chatbot. So if a user is talking to, your, to the chatbot of your help center, uh, you could Phrase, it, phrase one sentence, which is a little bit in a more informal language, and say, hey, Joe, nice to have you back. Um, let me help you with uh, installing the software. But in the written technical documentation, you would, might want to have a more serious language, a more formal language, uh, say, um, to install the software, please follow the following steps, or whatever. Yeah? And you can attribute the content with these platform and audience attributes in data, 
and um, manage it in one and the same document and then create two variants of it. One is the content that the chatbot can pull out and one is the content that goes into the PDF for the printed documentation. So you can attribute that and this is, this is what we call intelligent content. So our technical com communicators and their company is ready for it. And in 2018, we made a worldwide technical communication survey. survey. Uh, did any one of you participate in that? This big survey from Adobe? No one? OK. <laughs> OK. You could win a lot of great prizes there. <laughs> next year, uh, when we do it again, uh, I guess early next year? or In October. Uh, so in October we start that, so watch out on social media channels uh, for um, our announcement about that, and it's a, a big survey. And uh, in 2018, about 2,000 uh, companies participated in it, and uh, we, we were asking a lot of questions around structured authoring, but also which tools are you using and so on. And 50% uh, of the audience that we interviewed uh, in this uh, survey, they are already doing structured authoring on a worldwide level. Yeah, not, not on a country level, but 50% are already doing structured authoring, which means they're working with XML. And 44% of the uh, companies working with XML, they're already using DIDA. So about, about a quarter. And 31% of them were planning to go and move to DIDA in the next years. So at one point, I'm really uh, curious how the results in the 2019 uh, survey will be. Uh, DIDA has definitely reached a tipping point uh, or a breakthrough point uh, where about 50% of the companies who are in technical documentation are using DIDA. So that's definitely the standard to build on. Then that's also one reason why Adobe is investing into DIDA-based solutions so much. Let's talk a little bit about what you can do with that, blending marketing and technical communication into a unified customer experience. Let me show you the GoPro marketing website. This is the GoPro marketing website. Typical, wonderful um, marketing website, and GoPro is a really cool company. They produce uh, these small cameras, action cameras, and people jump out of a plane or whatever, uh, filming what they're doing and then posting it on YouTube. And uh, their audience is usually a relatively, relatively young audience, yeah? action, action loaded people. And uh, they, um, they want to have this action camera to film what cool, cool, uh, cool kind of stuff they are doing. And this young audience, they're not sitting in front of their big desktop PC anymore. They're, uh, they're sitting in front of their smartphone. They want to consume content on their smartphone. They want to consume it online, and they want to consume it everywhere and on every device. Let's have a look at the technical documentation from GoPro, if that fits to uh, this modern company. This is the technical documentation for the GoPro Hero 5. You would expect something completely different from GoPro, of course, yeah? that, you, that you can interactively scroll through documentation on, webs, on your mobile phone and so on. But th what they provide is a PDF with two pages printed on one PDF page. It's a double-facing PDF page. Yeah? And uh, this is maybe not really the best way of documentation, especially when you're uh, such a company like GoPro. And I also like very much how they uh, introduce uh, this is the getting started guide, and the first sentence is, welcome to your new uh, Hero 5 Black, that's okay. And the second sentence in the technical documentation is, to capture video and photos, you need to buy a micro SD card sold separately. Maybe we should also think a little bit about the content intelligence from that perspective. <laughs> so, could they do that better? Yeah, they could. They could author uh, the whole content in DIDA with FrameMaker or Adobe Experience Manager. And they could semantically tag the content. So here's the heading, the title, insert the battery. That goes into the title uh, element. You, you saw that uh, similar in the um, uh, FrameMaker and Dita presentation this morning. Then there's a, the short description. In this topic, you learn how to insert the battery. And then there comes the task body with multiple steps in it. And uh, there's the step group and step one, step two, step three with a command like hold down the latch uh, release button on the battery door, slide the battery door open, insert the battery into the battery slot, and then there's a step result with one paragraph in it. The battery is replaced now and you can turn on your device. So, under the hood, that looks like this, SXML. Do you want to take a photo again? <laughs> uh, under the hood, it looks like this. So you have the task, 
with a unique ID tied to short description, the steps, and so on. And this is, this is pure data XML, and they can put that into Adobe Experience Manager and XML documentation, and then publish it to a help portal. And the main title, they, the header, so to say, they put, oops, put up here with the same, same image that they were using in marketing, then having the getting started title, subtitle charging the battery, and then put the content in here. So this is a much nicer experience than just the PDF. It looks nicer, it's more friendly, and uh, it's uh, embedded in the marketing website in the same look and feel. And this is the core structure of it. Help page header, help page content. What they could also do now is add some marketing content there. So when we talk about replacing a battery, they could place the link to their uh, um, um, replacement parts uh, uh, shop where they sell replacement batteries. Yeah, why not? Why is it so difficult for a customer when he looks for uh, help about how to replace the battery? Why is the customer journey ending there? The customer journey should continue from there because the customer might probably want to buy a second battery for a longer battery life or when, uh, when, when, when they go on to a long journey or uh, walk through the uh, woods or whatever. And they want, might want to uh, buy that battery directly from GoPro or get a link to Amazon where they can buy it or whatever. So GoPro could uh, um, uh, implement marketing content there as well. And of course, um, they could also promote newer products uh, let's say there's the GoPro Hero 6 now, which has longer battery life and uh, high-resolution high, uh, high video, 4K video, and whatever. So they could also place uh, that. And to do that, it's very easy. They just need to add to the same task that we had here, an attribute product with the value GoPro Hero 5. And now the system suddenly knows that this content is for the GoPro Hero 5, and then they can add marketing content for the GoPro Hero 6, promoting that. Oh, you have the GoPro Hero 5? Did you already know about our new pro product, the GoPro Hero 6, which is much cooler? Yeah, it has longer battery life, better video, and so on, and video stabilization, <laughs> and so on. Yeah? So they can blend <coughs> technical content and marketing content together. And of course, the possibilities are endless and limitless. They could also pu pull in Twitter feeds uh, from their Twitter account. They could place community content, whatever. Say upsells and uh, cross-sells is just one possibility, but they can imp uh, Im implement every kind of um, uh, online content into their help portal as well. Yeah? So by using database intelligent content enriched with metadata and attributions, companies can blend marketing and technical content seamlessly together and create a unified customer experience, which is a consistent customer experience. So author, Dida in Adobe FrameMaker or XML documentation for Adobe Experience Manager, and then manage and publish both on Adobe Experience Manager platform plus all the additional output channels like PDF, apps, and uh, for iOS and Android, CHM, EPUB, Amazon Kindle, whatever. Yeah? And uh, sometimes people ask me on conferences, uh, should we, in the future, should we publish PDF or should we publish responsive HTML5? And I would say both. Yeah? Let your customer decide what they want to consume, when they want to consume it, where they want to consume it, and in which format they want to consume it. Maybe they want to have the PDF because they're sitting in the train uh, driving through South Germany where they don't have cell phone reception, and uh, they want to have a PDF for that. Or they're um, um, sitting in a plane and don't have access and want to uh, look something up. Or they're online and want to have that online experience with the uh, uh, online help that you provide. So just publish to all the channels. You can do it. With Adobe tools, you can do it. You can publish to all these channels in one go at the same time. So give your customers that freedom to decide on their own how and when and where and in which format they want to consume that content. Let me just quickly, as the last slide, uh, show you how that publishing works. So here in Adobe Experience Manager, you have your marketing website content. You have all your assets, like all these images, what we saw in the last presentation, and have all the possibilities there. Uh, you have analytics and a lot more communities and so on. And you have your data map, your data topic, and your data task. And now you, you're um, the uh, website manager and you want to create a unified customer experience. And then you drag and drop some marketing content there. Oh, I need that image. I drag and drop it there. And then I build my 
whole website here. I put my data map there, my data topic, I put there, and the data reference and the data task and concept and so on, and some additional content I drag and drop from my repository to that website there, another image, content. And so I can build a new experience, a new website, consisting of both technical content, technical documentation, technical data, whatever, uh, plus marketing content. Just by drag and drop, I can blend and merge these formerly disconnected worlds. Yeah. Let that sink as an inspiration. And I say, bedankt. <laughs>